e ma le ni be wo ni le loko e siku dede asiko yi hello everyone it's adiron ke again i hope your day is going well today i'd like to continue with my series on yoruba incantations awful and this one refers to abundance and fertility so it's a good incantation for abundance for fertility because it refers to it so if you're praying for these it's a good incantation to insert before or after um and it sort of also refers to the to the corn not just sort of but there is the mention of the corn so in this case the piece of nature that we're using um as a reference for for a wish for a prayer is the corn and uh, also there's the ebe the ebe is the heap of soil that we typically make when we want to plant and i'm just going to very briefly some people may already know this you know if you're into agriculture but um, it helps the plant get nutrients easier is because it's quite different from planting in a pot the way that you know we typically do in the cold parts of north america in the colder places you can't really plant on the ground the ground in especially like in certain north american you know states specifically in the us and canada get so cold and the and the land is can be really really infertile so you kind of have to ban buy the sand buy the everything um at home in nigeria in you know neighboring african states the the ground is so fertile that you don't really need to buy soil or buy like you know i know that you can plant certain things on the ground here as well and they would grow you know depending on the time of the year but they need to be aided so much and there's just so much work that goes into it but you know the the ground is really fertile at home you know even if you don't intentionally plant something if you just throw the seed on the ground let's say pepper or something you will just see the the plants start to sprout after a while so the land is really fertile but to help things grow even faster or like you know to help seeds get nutrients faster you tend to make heaps heaps of soil so that by the time the heap flattens the the stem would have taken its place in the soil so much so that they would know how to fend for themselves it would know how to fend for itself you know the the plant so but ebe ebe is what we call that heap of soil ebe and in a larger like you know setting it may look like this i've never really seen this style of planting in which there would be water in between and you sort of i just found it really interesting that was why i picked the image typically we wouldn't like i suppose this is a riverine area i'm not quite sure how they were able to do this if they introduced the water after the after making the hips or they put the hips on the water somehow it's really interesting to me but i feel like it's the it's the former i feel like they did the planting and then introduced the water but i'm not i'm not really sure um this is what it would look like on a larger scale one ab would look like this one heap of soil so let's go into the incantation itself and um first of all i'll tell you what it means word for word before i translate it and then tell you how it would it would apply to a prayer if you remember my first video when i introduced offer i said is 
they are prayer aiders, they are references. So because that happens, this would happen in my case as well, just using it as a point of contact or like a, not necessarily even point of contact, but like, yeah, I think reference is the word as a reference for something. Let's, there are, there are different ways to, to say it. There are two ways and even this may, you t tend to just pick one of these as well. One of these two words in either of the two versions, you know, so let's get, get into what they mean, what for what. Ihoho, lagbadon wo ebi, igbasho lonko jade. Ihoho, lagbadon wo ebi, igbasho lonko jade. Or you could say, ihoho, lagbadon wo ebi, igbamo. I was going to say Asho again, no. No more this time. Lonko jade. Ihoho. Lagba don wo ebe. Igba omo lonko jade. So if you want to say that a little faster, you would say, Ihoho lagba don wo ebe. Igba asho lonko jade. Ihoho lagba don wo ebe. Igba omo lonko jade. You know, what What does, what? what do these words mean? What does that sentence mean? There are two sentences in one now because you tend to just choose one of these, you know. So well, anyway, you can also say, "Ihoho lagba don wo ebe to ba jade ton adoni gbasho." Ihoho lagba don wo ebe to ba jade ton adoni gbasho. Or you could say, "Ihoho lagba don wo ebe to ba jade ton adoni gba omo." Ihoho lagba don wo ebe to ba jade ton adoni gba omo asho we sort of refer to wealth things that are more monetary more wealth based or more would refer to fertility so asho would be abundance um abundance and and such Oma would be for fertility, so it would be either of the two. Um, yeah, abundance and fertility. Let's start with the first version and see um, what they mean, word for word. Ihoho is naked. It can be nakedness, depending on the context, but it is naked in this one. Depending on the context and the words that precede or come after, you can be naked or nakedness. It's naked here. Lagbado is not an original word. It's a contraction of two words. Ni can be is, it can be is how, it can be is what, it can be is, is when, can be... Depending on if you had a, another word or another two words, it can be is, uh, is why, but it is in and of itself, because it's a different language and for translation purposes, it sort of has to make sense. You can insert whatever is fitting. So in this case, it's is how. Agbado is the corn or maize seed. So... The seed, the corn seed, this is agbadu. This is also agbadu if it's, if it's attached to the cob. Even it's still agbadu. A whole corn, still a whole cob of corn. Or what, what would I even call this one? But this is agbadu, this is agbadu. You know, the seed is agbadu, the whole thing. After harvest. Is still agbadu, so it's the corn or maize seed. Um, I intentionally had it seed here because you would still be referring to the seed pre-planting. It would make sense soon. Mm, whenever you see mm in a sentence, it's a present or continuous tense indicator. So it tells you that the sentence is in present tense, or you know. It's in continuous tense. So it's something that may be happening currently or something that happens. 
war is enter because of the 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 position that it is in this sentence it would be war which is enter but in and of itself outside the sentence uh it would be war but i'll, I'll get into it that i don't want to go too far into that <laughs> ebe is heap of soil formed for planting so i explained that even before i went into explaining what the words mean the purpose and why we would uh, make the ebe and then igba is 200 igba is 200 asho if you're saying asho you know is cloth if you're saying omo omo is child asho is cloth you can see the slash so you choose either of the two pertaining to your situation and then omo is child lo is not an original word either it's a contraction of ni o ni o ni is is in this context it's is what i explained here that here it is how here it is what you just have to put whatever is fitting in brackets for transliteration purposes o is it here because you're referring to the corn seed but it could be he it could be she uh, it works for any single thing um, living or non-living if it's one older person then you know of course you wouldn't say oh but it he or she the he or she being somebody that is younger than you or your age mate mm, you already know what it is present or continuous tense indicator and then ko is take in large amounts i explained this in the video that i did on i think it was elegbara when i said uh oban koeye elegba if you remember for anybody who has seen that video ko is different from mu because mu is to take a single thing. Mu is like this. This is mu. You take a single thing. But if you take this and you take this, this is a pawn. And you take that. And you take this. This is ko. You're taking multiple things at once. <laughs> I, I got this corn <laughs> to use an, as an illustration. And I, I wasn't able to do the video for a while. So it's all dried up, but I'm still going to use it anyway. Ko is to take in large amounts. So mu is to take a single thing, like a single piece of something like mu. Ko suggests that you're taking something in larger amounts. Bring, depending on the words that come next, it could be bring. If I say ko, ko wa wa, bring them, you know, so it could be bring um, as well gather it could be gather gather pack pack them como you know so it could be any of these and then jade is not an original word either it's ja and ode combined ja would be to launch something to open up something um so launch if i say if you say jaora this let's use this for instance if i cut this if i cut this it's ja it could be to tear something packaged or sealed but it could also be to dash with speed to run dash in reference to running to dash with speed sort of like uh um jalo nibolo jabo where, where are you dashing to? Where are you dashing from? The dog, Aja, that was how the the dog got their name. The dogs got their name, their generic name, Aja, because they dash, they run. So that was the initial thought that came to the ancestor that gave them the name. And everybody just followed suit with that description. That eventually became their name, Aja Aja. Of course, you can give them more personal names. 
um, that's just what we call, you know, their group of beings. Um, so Jah will be any of that. But in this context, it's sort of serving as two. Two. Because of the what comes after. So it could also be two, like, you know, still referring to towards something. You know. It's it's two in this case, basically. But I wanted to also mention the other words that it could be. It's two in quotation marks. Ode is could be depending on the context. It could be out. It could be outer. Uh, ojade. She. Yeah, it could be two. It can be went. It can be. When nouns like this come after, it just becomes whatever it needs to become for transliteration purposes in English. So if I say moja de, moja de, moja de, I went out. In that case, it would be went. In this case, it's two. Ode is out. Could be outer. It could be the outdoors. It could be the external. It could be any of these. But it just refers to like you know out outer the outdoors the external so let's transliterate now that we can see the words let's transliterate naked is how this suggests that it's you know pres uh, present or continuous tense naked is how the corn or maize seed enters the heap of soil formed for planting 200 clothes or if you say asho if you say almost 200 children is what it brings to the outer <laughs> this is sort of like a rough way to put these words together but Naked is how the corn or maize seed goes into the heap of soil. 200 clothes or children are what it brings out or are what it brings to the external. Would be the transliteration. Would be, would be basically what we've just said here. The words that we've just identified. When you put them together, you get this. Naked is how the maize or corn seed goes into the heap of soil <laughs> naked is how the maize or corn seed goes into the heap of soil 200 clothes or 200 children are what it brings out it's what it is so if you translate it to make it a little better you could say the corn seed goes into the soil naked and returns with 200 clothes if you say asho but if you say omo the corn seed goes into the soil naked and returns with 200 children i suppose the next question would be why 200 why does it have to be 200 if you remember this video you know i explained just how significant 200 is to the yoruba people there are significant numbers like that and i've mentioned them um in my course of making videos when I made the video on Yoruba um, tone marks and I said, you know, things are powerful in threes, I mentioned three. I've also mentioned 200 here and there, this one being one. 203 suggests that it's part, if you say Arumeta, Tiokindobenu, if you say Okunimeta, if you say, um, um, Abameta, as in Saturday, if you just, they're just different places where three appear, three ap appears, apologize. And it suggests that they are powerful. Igba suggests that um, there's an abundance of something. There's an abundance of something. Or that, or even the height of something height of something so if you're using it in reverence to 
actually just in reference to things that are abundant or things that are as much as they possibly can be for good and for bad then it that would be fitting if you're referring to powerful three if you're referring to abundant 200 of course there are other numbers sometimes the number 16 or 7 um, even two in reference to like love and uh, opposition they are just numbers like that that appear that tell you what Yoruba people attach to them or what ancient Yoruba people attach to them as far as using them as metaphors using them metaphorically so Igba here suggests that there's an abundance as much as they possibly can Okay, in this case, let's just stick with the abundance. You, if 200 is here, they returned with 200 clothes. They return is something that they constantly do. Do when we plant corn, it's a constant thing. We never stop planting corn. So the corn seed goes into the soil naked and returns with 200 clothes and children. What do they mean, clothes? These are the clothes. When you plant a a corn a corn seed into the ebe just one and you bring it out and you harvest it notice how there are so many things covering it now i will talk about it after i talk about the other way to say it but notice how they are just they have so many layers of clothes they went naked it was just one seed of of corn or maize but notice that you have with so many clothes Notice how many clothes they have now, you know, so many clothes. So, but I, I, I'll, I'll get there soon. 200 anyway, just keep that at the back of your mind, even before we get there, that it suggests the uttermost, you know, abundance, a lot, a lot, as much as they possibly can, abundance. Anyway, let's go into the other way to say it, because it's not just one way, this other way. If you say it this way, you know, if you say it this way, it would be, um, you know, the same thing, which I've explained. To is, to can be a word like, um, is it onomatope? Onomatope or something. But to is sort of like how we voice out the process of spitting. To. But to here is not that. This one is a contraction of T-O. T is if or when. Tobawa koso fumi. If he comes, tell me. Tiobati de koso fumi. When he arrives, Tell me, could be if or when, depending on the context. Or is it or he or she, you know, as I explained. But is also if or may, but it supports this. It supports this. So it's sort of like very similar in meaning, but you, whenever you see T, you tend to see ba, tio ba, timo ba, tia ba, timo ba de. It just supports this. It just follows this everywhere. But it's also if or like me. Ba can also be me. You know. Supports T. <laughs> supports T. Like I've said. Tio ba supports T. Jade is ja i've explained you know launch tear something to or de you know out outer the external we explained Tan, completely or like finished or done depending on the context it could be complete 
or completely or finished or done all depending on the context ah uh, ah uh, the first ah uh is it the second is well ah uh, donigba d oni igba d is become onigba is the one that which is o the ni is have or has igba is 200 so d onigba donigba become the one that has 200 asho is cloth omo is child so when you put this together naked is how the corn or maize seed enters the soil the heap of soil when it launches to the external or comes to the external for the purpose of transliteration you sort of <laughs> have to insert what needs to be inserted different language different way of thinking when you're translating it to english it's not always as smooth you know anyway comes to the comes to the external launches to the external completely it will become the one that has 200 clothes or 200 children of course i can't say 200 clothes and i can't say 200 child that's why i'm saying clothes here and children here but this is so that you know what they mean word for word and then of course when you're translating you make it make sense <laughs> anyway naked is how the maize or corn seed goes into the heap of soil when it comes out fully it will become the owner of 200 clothes or children or since yeah it will yeah it will it's not really it becomes here because of ah it will so yeah it will become the owner of 200 clothes and children naked is how the maize or corn seed goes into the heap of soil when it comes out fully it will become the owner of 200 clothes or 200 children when you translate it it says the corn seed goes into the soil naked and resurfaces as the owner of 200 clothes and children or or children the corn seed goes into the soil naked and resurfaces as the owner of 200 clothes the corn seed goes into the soil naked and resurfaces as the owner of 200 children if you look at the process of planting the corn there's something really really wonderful about it and still a little bit I don't know there's still something quite mysterious about it to me I've gone through different diagrams like this and I can tell you it still doesn't make sense to me the exact process of multiplication is still not as, as explained as you know it can be to me which means there's something really mysterious about it if you plant one or two or three seeds and they start to germinate I suppose they start to sprout they start to do this and then the this is the seedling this is what becomes of it but then I suppose the magic starts to happen somewhere here and then it starts to flower of course you know it tells you that this is this is cooking and it's almost done and then you get this but the process of multiplication is still you know Eledumara is really powerful is is really something it's really really something and then this is the fruit with seeds you know you, now you get several corn or maize seeds attached to the cob you know but I'm still very very mesmerized by the process of multiplication so it is this process that the this incantation is referring to so again the this is the process sort of so very similar to this diagram just starts to 
germinate and sprout and grows and the magic starts to appear you know you start to see this very very wonderful planting process so because that happens because this happens because somehow in a way that defies I want to say that defies simple logic because because it really does the multiplication process you know there are just so many factors because that anyway because that happens you know that would happen in my case is what you would be saying when you use this incantation in your prayer this will happen my prayer will be accepted because this happens so when I explained why we say incantations, I did mention that we use, because we, it's, it's very good, it's very good for, for and I, I mentioned that in any religion, they, they, they say incantations. They may not want to use the word because they think that it's a dirty word, <laughs> but incantations are incantations. Whether you're taking them from the Bible or you're taking them from history. I said ours come from everywhere, from history, from nature, from everywhere. This one is one of the nature-based incantations. Because this happens, because when the corn goes into the heap of soil, they come back abundant. When I go to this when I go into this project, or when I um do this job and when i go into this country or when i start to do you may not even necessarily be going anywhere when i submit this application or when i say these words to whoever i'm going to be placing a call to in a couple of minutes you know because this happens i would also come out abundant like the like the corn seed like the maize seed if I'm looking for a child, so if I want to do something, maybe I want to take this pill or I want to do this, I don't know, this... IVF or I want to um, oh I want to do this I just want to do something maybe I'm not even doing anything you know I'm just staying in that spot um, because the corn goes into heap of goes into the heap of soil and comes back with several children that would of, of course you wouldn't necessarily be asking for 200 children specifically um, but you know, it's a, you would be referencing the abundance aspect of it. So it is more of a metaphor now than an actual number, a metaphor for abundance. You know, I'll come up with as many children as I want, or I would have as many children as I want, you know, using the corn or the corn seed as a point of contact, as a reference for oneself, because this happens to the corn. This will happen to me as I apply for this job. Not even Berry at this point because I'm applying. Bimoshefe fi iwe sile. Si bishai. Kinli rishai gba. Iwoho lagba don waibi. Toba jade ton. Adoni gba sho. Kin rishai gba. Kin rishai gba. Kokpe miu. You know, because this happens, this will happen in my case. I'm going naked. I don't have anything. I don't have any child. I'm desperately in need of clothing, in need of stability, or even the clothes can even refer to security. You can make it fit whatever context you want it to fit. 
you know as long as it aligns with the, the with the base naked is how i'm going i'm returning with clothes you know i don't have anything but as i do this as i lay my hand on this project i'm coming back with an abundance of with abundance with abundant wealth with wealth really if you have wealth you're already abundant in money you know i'm coming out abundant so that's the purpose of this incantation if i take just one concert how do i take it out without squishing it let me use a pen oh <laughs> just splashed in my face anyway the point is i plant one of this if i plant one of this you know or two or three of this in the soil and i come come out with this that's abundance i want the kind of abundance that occurs to the base it to occur to me as well to happen to me in my situation whether i'm looking for a child or i'm looking for abundance in other monetary aspects like a job or even just physical money naked is how the concept goes into into the heap of soil unclad unclothed and they come up with so many clothes so many clothes and so many children i want that to occur in my case as well so that's basically it because this will happen because that happens you know because this process happens you know a similar thing will also happen in my case i will also come out abundant if you have any questions please don't hesitate to ask thank you for watching thank you for your time thank you for your support thank you to my patrons and my youtube members i really really appreciate your support it means a lot and uh, i'll see you in the next one enjoy the rest of your day and bye for now Yeah.